John McCain sinking fast today? His campaign manager and his top political strategist both resigned, apparently under pressure. The news comes as McCain reported another quarter of weak fundraising and low poll numbers. He doesn't have to report those. We know about them. Are his positions on Iraq and illegal immigration doing him in? We go now to Congressional Court Leader Craig Crawford and our own NBC's Andrea Mitchell. Andrea, is this man got a real problem that's got nothing to do with staff? His hawkish support for President Bush's war, our war in Iraq, his strong position on behalf of people who came to this country illegally, immigrants, undocumented workers, and his age. Are those just insurmountable obstacles to a popularity contest in the Republican Party? Well, I, I think there's one other factor, Chris. It's his original embrace of the evangelicals and the others, the, uh, the conservatives who had criticized him, had fought against him in 2000, when he reverted, embraced not only George Bush in 2004 campaign, but also went and courted the very people at Liberty University and elsewhere who had trashed him, really, back in 2000. Did that make him look like a panda bear? It did. It made him look like a panda bear, who is, and that's not what most people associate with John McCain, a hero, and the agent of change, and yeah. the real straight talker and now he is actually a profile encouraged in some minds in some lights because of his stance on the war and on immigration and campaign finance because they are counterintuitive and against popular will and against the Republican base but it makes him an alien in both sides of the independent front and the more conservative Republican base so is it the fundamentals Craig Crawford that are hurting him not his staff problems not his fundraising not his organization but the fundamental position he's taken as a hawk the fundamental position he took as an advocate of, on behalf of illegal immigrants, basically, for reform, to give them a break, let them stay here, let them be legalized, and guest workers and all that, and his age, which is just something that happens to us all. I think all those hurt with different groups, uh, the immigration with the hardcore conservatives. Uh, his position on the war, I think, hurt him more with the media uh, than, uh, than Republican voters, and the media was his great friend in well, 2000. Did, who, uh, I don't know uh, anybody in the media that doesn't respect his service to the country. Oh, I, I'm not saying that. Well, I, 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 think, I think a lot of... Who in the media is taking uh, a shot at him? A lot, a lot of the mainstream media who had been uh, so excited about McCain in his first run in 2000, uh, I do think his position on the war uh, caused some to, to step back a bit, yeah. and, and he didn't get the glowing coverage. Well, he was coverage. a very popular and figure then, on this show. Then, Let me tell you, and I'd love him to still be on this show. He, he's hard to book these days. He's just a harder booking than he used to be. Yeah. He used to be on the Don Imus show all the time when Don was on the air. He's a very popular guest on that program. He's a familiar figure on the airwaves. Yeah, I, why I did think he choose he to stop doing to that? that? Why, did he, why did he stop doing that as a, as a, a campaign tactic? I, I think it's front-runner disease. Uh, he, he thought he, he was too big for us? He became a traditionalist. <laughs> and, yeah, and, well, and, I'm welcoming and, him here tomorrow and, morning. If you know, I, I think uh, he might... I, I, I'll look at the half-full half glass for a moment. I mean, first of all, I wouldn't want to be the first campaign manager for the first front-runner front in any presidential campaign yeah. because when the inevitable stumble comes, you're the first to go. We saw that with John Kerry. We saw it with Al Gore. We even saw with Ronald Reagan going back a few more years. Uh, so there's a chance here he could turn it around. I think he's better off as a maverick and an underdog. Yeah. If immigration's off the table okay. now, he's probably better off I than immigration failed. I can do better than you can. <laughs> I can do it, Let me, uh, I'll try it with Andrea. You know, if you look at it on paper, here's a guy who's more seasoned than the current president, President Bush. He's got more military experience. He's been exactly. around a long time in terms of national responsibility. He's been a patriot, of course. He's served his country brutally as a POW. He's always been honest and respected in the media. He has all the pluses in the world of a sort of a, you know, an Audie Murphy, if you will, a real war hero. It's not working. It isn't working, and I wouldn't count him out if, except for the money factor, because now everything is piled up, and this race is so extraordinarily expensive that it's hard to imagine how we can compete. We've seen already how uh, Mitt Romney was able to pull ahead of some of the others just by putting ads up. Well, one of his John top McCain guys was talking to me. I'm sorry, one of his top guys was talking to me on the phone today, and it was off the record, but I think he's out elsewhere making the same point, which is this burn rate. He's using up his money too much. Is that a problem? And that could have something to do with what we saw today, the staff shakeup. These are the people who were in charge of the money, and they were obviously spending it on the wrong things or spending too much, or there's another story there, but there's some concern clearly about the way this campaign is organized. Yeah, they, I rejected, know that, they rejected I, this, but I think the idea of him quitting the Senate and showing he's fully in this race is not such a bad idea. Now, that was rejected. Oh, I don't know. That, that this, was rejected. This man's uh, life is in Senate public for, service. Yeah. How could you imagine he's not him giving up. Senate? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a long shot for the presidency. And no, you and I are in the same. Good work for John Edwards. I'll give you that. You and I are in the same. But this man wants to be Barry Goldwater, a senator for life from Arizona. He does not. It's one of the reasons why he wants immigration reform. He wants to get some Latino votes down there. He doesn't want to be known as the Republican Party that doesn't like Latinos. And he's he taking a very liberal it. position. Well, he does believe in it, but also it's good politics yeah, for a guy. My point can. is there's a real feeling he's not fully in this race. He only held two fundraisers in the first quarter. That's been part of his problem. He hadn't really been committed to fundraising. Okay. So his commitment to the Look campaign is in this question. This is so instructive. Andrew, we're watching him just a moment ago sort of get, do one of the, what they call the mic check for one of these debates. I think he's miniaturized by standing among ten Republicans a man of his uh, seasoning and vintage to have to go out there and stand between Tancredo and Duncan Hunter and all these new guys. I, I don't think it works. You're on to something, Chris. If he were standing with Rudy Giuliani and Mitt Romney, you know, just a handful of guys stacked up against them, his experience in foreign affairs, his experience in the Senate, I think, would really dominate a debate. Yeah. But by having to, you know, debate everybody else in that lineup, it becomes much more difficult to stand out. Well, he's going to New Hampshire this weekend, so we'll see if he shows us something a little different. Let me, let me be, uh, let's get into the, to the really worst part of my job, which is to talk about what happens if he does continue to sink. Andrea, who wins? Who picks up the McCain vote? Does it all go to Fred Thompson, his friend? Does it go to yeah. his fellow maverick, Rudy Giuliani, or not exactly fellow maverick, but a man who has some things in common with Rudy Giuliani. Well, Fred Thompson is still untested. He is unscrutinized, and he has managed to float above all of this, and he is clearly picking up the McCain support and the McCain sort of iconic uh, you know, image, and he was one of the earliest supporters of McCain, so that is likely where it goes. Look, it could open the way, you know, eventually for somebody more independent, and you know who that is. Who's that? Well, uh, Mike Bloomberg, uh, down the road. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's stay within the Republican pack here. Okay. Andrea, let me ask you this. We all support the troops. Uh, people on the political left who don't like this war go over and do USO shows because they want to help the troops out. They'll do what they can. John McCain appears to us almost in a flag jacket. We've seen pictures of him in the marketplace over there walking around in Baghdad, tough neighborhoods. A man pr probably the most identified with the physical reality of this horrible war. And yet he's been hurt the most, whereas well, guys like Rudy Giuliani, I've never seen him wearing fatigues. I've never seen Fred Thompson wearing fatigues, and certainly not Mitt Romney. He's always extre extremely well-dressed in some other kind of khaki, but they don't look like G.I. Joes. And there's this guy who always shows up with the troops getting murdered politically. How well, come the Republican Party, which is the hawkish party, is punishing the one big hawk in the race. It's an, it's, it's an extraordinary development, but part of it is when he did go over and walk through that marketplace, he, he, you know, he tried to paint the picture too brightly, too optimistically, and then when you pull back and take a look at yeah. all the support and the flyovers and the, the armament around him, that undercut his basic message that things were improving on the ground. And things are improving on the ground, but John McCain mm -hmm. was always describing the glass as half full, not half empty, and that is frankly not the conventional wisdom nor what people want to hear. But I've got to keep coming back to among the, the traditional Republican primary voters, his position on the war is not what's hurting him. It, it's hurting him in other what hurts sectors of the, the race. I think the immigration, I think his, his maverick uh, nature, the, the, the maverick, the loss of the maverick status, and the, the whole evangelical complicated mix that, and guys, he, that you know, he's presented. You know, you're on to that. something there, too, because. The traditional Republican base has never trusted him since he went up, up against George W. Bush. Too much of a maverick in 2000, still not trusted in 2004 despite the hugs, yeah. and never really accepted by traditional Republicans. Isn't it funny, Andrew, you and I have been watching this business for a long time, and the Republican Party, unlike the Democratic Party, is more organized, as you both, we both know. They say, wait your turn. Well, here, this poor guy waited his, his turn. turn. Absolutely. It's his turn, <laughs> right. and he's getting the Bob Dole rollover. Anyway, thank you, Andrew Mitchell. And thank Thank you, Craig Crawford.